Okay, that's recording now. So I think if it's okay with you, then Russell will get started. So um, let's just admit that other person. Right, okay. Okay. So um, if we could give a, a very warm welcome, everyone, to Russell Cobb, who's going to be talking to you this afternoon. Thank you. So, should I just give a little introduction about myself? Um, uh, first thing I will say is that anyway, anyone please feel free to interject because it, it's a little bit, un, I've done this quite a bit, it's a little bit unnerving. Sometimes you get long, long silences. Uh, <laughs> I have this, hello, is anyone still there? So feel free. But uh, um, so basically I, I studied BA illustration at Central St. Martins um, with Chris Harper, actually, who was a year above me. That That's how we met. Um, I then had a bit of time out uh, and then also then went back to Central St. Martins to study for my MA. I also studied in Switzerland. Um, I'll come on to talk about this. I, I'm essentially an illustrator, but I, my time at St. Martins, I was also a photographer, which I did neglect for a few years and I sort of stepped back into that. Um, so that, that's a sort of, and I'm an associate lecturer at uh, Solon University. Um, so that that's a sort of brief history. Now, shall I screen share now? Let's hope this works. Okay, can everyone see that? Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's great. Great. So maybe I shall turn off uh, content only. So um, I looked at what. Uh, Chris had sent me, um, sorry about that little message there. Can we hide that? Yeah. Oh. Um, I read, I read um, what Chris had sent me and essentially there was, uh, it was under the umbrella of making your mark. Um, and I did think about this quite a bit. And, and I think this talk that I give is essentially is very much about making, making my mark. Um, what I like to do, I don't really like to show sort of finished work, um, the, the sort of very sort of finite polished side of things. I like to show all the internal workings behind, behind the scenes. So back in uh, 2008, this was a lecture at uh, LCC, I started to call my talk uh, an inside view. So this is very much what it is. And I'll come to talk about um, all the different things that, that I do. So what I do, I tend to sort of, um, sorry about the scrolling as well here. Um, just a problem with uh, PowerPoint here. Um, but what I like to do is just sort of pepper um, photographs of my studio in very much like a coffee table book to sort of give you a sense of the behind the scenes. So this was just a, a photograph of my old studio. Um, one thing I'll come on to talk about is sketchbooks. Sketchbooks, um, I'm going to keep using the word mark, mark making, making your mark. Um, sketchbooks is something that I've really um, have enjoyed doing right back into my times as, as a student. So I've always been a sort of prolific sketchbook keeper and that's sort of served me really well throughout my, um, my journey, my career as a creative. Um, I'll also talk about uh, my self-initiated work. Um, I think the bottom line with me as a creative I, I'll be really honest, I seem to be working 50% of the time, 50% of the time I'm not. So I'm always sort of being very industrious, I'm always doing something behind the scenes, I'm always sort of working on new projects and producing new work and essentially keeping myself excited about what I do as well. So there, there's a lot of work behind the scenes and th these are just two paintings from the sort of self-initiated series. Um, I'll talk about photography as well. I've always been a bit of a photographer and um, I do feel like a bit of a split personality and I'm sure I'll get questioned on that, but it, it's very much a, it's a different thing, but 
somehow you'll see the two fuse together in some ways and i just see the cameras as another tool so from from sort of printing drawing painting and clicking that shutter um i guess we can come on to this as well you might want to ask me about this but uh being a, a, an illustrator working alone in the woods here is quite an isolating uh, profession so there is part of me that really enjoys collaborating and getting out there and creating something new and meeting people. So that that's uh, we'll come on to talk about that. Um, and here's some of the portraits. Um, I've been working on a series of uh, reenactors and escapers, and um, I'll, again, I'll come on to talk about this. But this is just a brief um, synopsis first away. So. Let's talk about sketchbooks. Um, it's really interesting. I, I remember a long time after leaving college, people would come up to me and sort of say, are you a student? And, and it was quite interesting, that notion of it's something that one does as a student. Um, but I, I've, I've always kept it up. I've always uh, been on this sort of prolific journey of sketching. You can tell how old this... Uh, lecture is now there's an iphone 4 but uh, i feel very lucky that uh, i was sort of in the era of um sort of pre-digital in the way at central st martins we only had a few macs uh didn't have mobile phones used to use phone boxes so it kind of really forced me to use the pen so my sort of my kind of app was this and it's something i've always carry with me as a sort of rotary lettering pen um, I've always got one in my pocket. So sketchbooks. Um, this was before a lecture many years ago. So um, they become everything for me. There's, I, I sort of think there's no logic to it really. But and I made a little list before a lecture. They're vehicles for ideas. Um, they're vehicles for observation, formulating thoughts. I'm reading the list on the left here. Self critique, research. I kind of made them really fun for me, so they became sort of a bit of a diary of a journey of my life, my creative um, being in a way. And so I'm always sort of looking for the extraordinary in the ordinary. Um, it's my way of writing. It's a vehicle for inquiry, and most importantly, coordinate coordinates eye, mind, and hand. And this has served me really well as an illustrator when I can sort of talk to an art director and, and send, send off roughs and visualize thoughts and just takes a lot of practice really for me. Um, I hope you don't think I'm a very lonely person, but uh, I'll come on to talking about, I, I just noticed that I feel quite isolated. So I got into the habit of for many, many years, um, I'll just start my day. I'll just go out for an hour. It tricks my brain into going to work, and I'll sit in a coffee shop and just pour all my thoughts um, into a sketchbook spread. Um, I've stopped eating pastries, actually, thankfully. But um, this is something that I, I've always kept up. And there you can see sort of um, here you can see obs observation, what's in front of me. And there's also a bit of a game here, almost sort of drawing myself and... Uh, yeah, all sorts of things. But this does go back to, this is BA Honours uh, degree show work. Um, I became very influenced by encyclopedias and information graphics, mixing typography with text. And that's something that, that sort of really stayed with me and um, embedded into my sort of creative DNA. So this was basically a self-critique of my work at the time. So from that time, uh, this is third year BA, here you can sort of see uh, a collection of sketchbooks. And they're very much a, a vehicle for pouring everything in into. So on the top there, we have sort of a new, um, I was kind of thinking in moving imagery, believe it or not, um, without having the capacity to do it. So um there's there's a play on information graphics and type the the second row down there there's sort of an interest in theater design second row down to the right here was uh travels in italy and they're wonderful things as well for me to look back on right? because you remember the site the sights the smells the sounds 
who you were, where you were at that very time. Going to the bottom here to the zoo, sometimes just watching um, watching TV, watching a film, it's just, just a response to Peter Greenaway's uh, film, Z and Two Knots, which inspired me at the time. So really, it's the analogy of just being a human sponge and pouring everything on, onto paper um, and constantly wanting to make a mark. Just a little, I grew up sort of reading encyclopedias and I always sort of think this is this is a little reference point just to sort of show you the painting and the line drawing that, that there's a sort of continuity there. And the information graphics, this goes back to sort of BA time as well. There we have it again, exploded diagrams, um, type, image. Um, quite sort of uh, immersive, I guess, and intense, but uh, just I just love sort of losing myself in sketchbooks. And here we have from 2018, um, just um, painting directly into sketchbooks. So here I am sort of many, many years later, still, still working, still, and they really are my go-to. They're my personal library. It's my, um, yeah, my personal library. What's the another? Um, my reference point. So uh, I've got hundreds and hundreds of sketchbooks now. So um, I, I kind of love dipping back into them and opening old ones, and they become a trigger point for new ideas. It's another example. I suppose they're quite finished in a way, but uh, I'm, I'm sort of, yeah. So, there's a bit of craft in it, and I'm a bit sort of uh, sometimes I'm always criticizing myself. I'm too tight and too controlling, but uh, I just sort of don't really think about that too much. It's just how it comes out. Uh, um, we talk about style sometimes. I think it's it's like handwriting. Uh, it's just this is just how it comes out. Um, early sketchbooks as well. This served me well as a uh, making marks on. Um, Observation that this was just the time being in London and sitting on the tube and just drawing, drawing people in front of me and drawing memories. And I wanted to go a bit further as well, that I had an idea of having an exhibition to sort of say, is this you? Because I would actually write down what I thought of the people, where, where they got on, where they got off. Um, the more you look, the more you see um, sort of imperfections or... or odd socks or holes in jumper. It was really interesting just to keep looking and looking. And it's incredible how unobservant people are as well. So this was just like little A5 sketchbooks. I've just had in the palm of my hand. And again, just great for killing time on trains, waiting rooms, airports, and uh, also being an illustrator, it served me well. I, I sort of listen to conversations, so it's quite obsessive. But I, but a, a conversation combined with a drawing would would um, kind of give the drawing a, a trigger point or a theme or um, sort of starting to see patterns. Uh, sometimes just humour. There's all the humour involved, which is just quite funny when I read back at it. Um, making marks. I'm going to keep saying that because that's the topic. Uh, th these are just sketchbooks when I'm talking to art directors on the telephone. And um, I'm sort of making lists and drawing little thumbnails and scamps um, just to sort of oil my thought process and um, just get the cogs turning. And these are always sort of a go to. I always go back to those very first initial thoughts and notation. Um, so here we are, sort of recent sketchbook. Sorry, this is a bit blurry here, but um, just gives you sort of an example of uh, always having one in my hand. Um, third row down, there's sort of drawings in the V&A Museum. Up here, we just got travels in Switzerland, winter time, sitting there watching uh, people play ball. Uh, bottom here, looking at uh, drawing in the hairdressers, waiting, waiting in the queue. So even just but the bottom here, even just birds in the garden. Um, so 
constantly drawing, making notes, notation. Um, this is what sort of underpins me. This is my sort of reservoir I dip into. Let's just have a closer look. Um, I was quite influenced by films, um, and um, one of the films, uh, Nicholas Rogue, uh, what, oh goodness me, what's the film? Um, Don't Look Now. It was a wonderful film all about sort of seeing connections. Um, so I always sort of look for connections or suddenly this bottom right here was me leaving Switzerland and noticing the bollards on the way, the walk to the bus. And then notice, arriving here in the UK, noticing bollards uh, again, looking for connections and just um, what I had for breakfast the day before in Switzerland. And so it's it's very much a diary, very much a, just sort of immersive playfulness. Let's have a closer look. I start looking at the dates now. This is uh, oh, it's not dated. Oh, two thousand and eight. There you go. Um, travels in Amsterdam. Sometimes I, um, these are all drawings from memory. It was my sort of journey walking around Amsterdam. And, uh, I was there talking at a conference and just ended up in this very sort of using the word lonely again, lonely hotel room with nothing to do. So I just sat and drew all my memories of, of the day, um, people I'd seen and things. So, um, that's quite quite fun to do, sort of memory drawings. And here we have a very bad night's sleep. So it's always sort of looking and in inquiry. And um, here I've always sort of kept a camera as well, so um, photographically. These are actually two English tourists I overheard and sort of realising that they dress the same and almost how – couples mold together and that, that that was a sort of another starting point a bit of humor and I don't know what they were thinking here sandals uh, shorts and stripy shirt day just checking in is everyone still there yeah yeah, Excellent. Still there, Excellent. yeah. Okay. <laughs> it has happened honestly um, so People say, where do you get all your ideas from? Um, and I'm always sort of working in these like little boxes and 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 uh, it, it's sort of like a chain reaction of a thought process. So I'll, and sometimes the drawings just interconnect and then one drawing will trigger another. And uh, so this is a very typical sketchbook, um, how, how I sort of leapfrog and um, kind of a bit of lateral thinking from one idea to the next. I think this was uh, after a visit to Kew Gardens and looking at seed pods and uh, things like that. And, you know, and then something you sort of, uh, the journey ends up from the Kew Gardens visit that you sort of, you do, there's a lot of cross-referencing cross going on. So um, things become more conceptual, the ideas and just taking it's like lots of ingredients uh, taking the notion of sort of nature, the human figure, growth, um, vision. So I'm always sort of mixing things up. Uh, nearly there on the sketchbook. Sometimes I don't really know what to draw, so I'm quite often drawing myself drawing um, in the studio, in the drawing room. So it's simply that. It's just constantly putting pen to paper. And here, just designing a, a new studio. So I've always sort of been influenced by and interested in sort of industrial design and architecture and a lot, a lot of things I can't afford. So I'm always designing things. And um, Just another sketchbook page, a little bit of self-mockery. Well, free, like being a freelance illustrator, it's like being a U-boat commander. Oh dealing with isolation and hunting for opportunity. So it was just a, a, a thought that day. Oh, sorry, there's more here. There's a reference to encyclopedias. There's a lot of sort of notation and lettering that does go back to encyclopedias. And here we go. The use of letters here on the, on the bats. 
Um, quite often I work in sort of a sequence of sketchbooks as well. I have a lot just open on my desktop here and I'll just pick up whatever one I fancy and each page sort of triggers, triggers another page. Um, just to pepper this with a, this is my old studio in Hitchin Hearts. Um, this was the article for 3 by 3 magazine. And uh, I guess a uh, pitch is a thousand words and that, that just sort of maybe conveys a sort of a, the volume of ideas being pumped out and uh, an active brain, I hope. Mind you, I did what's that film, um, A Beautiful Mind with Russell Crowe and it was it was a descent into madness. So <laughs> I think uh, it worried me a bit. So I, I think I stripped the studio down after that. Um, so underpinning all the sketchbook work is the personal work, um, the work that goes on behind the scenes. And I'm often um, working in sequence. I, I'll, uh, from an advertising perspective, having worked in um, four uh, on advertising jobs, so I, I always sort of sometimes treat my work as a, as a brand and a product and very influenced by fashion and because sometimes you're sitting there, say, well, what shall I paint next? And I think, well, it's springtime, so I'll bring out a new spring range. Um, or And products are always evolving. Um, there's something else I always sort of talk about. I read a really interesting uh, article once, uh, a photographer talking about your creative life, and he, he sort of put figures on it. And um, he sort of said, you're on, av on average, you're sort of 40 years as a creative and it goes in seven year cycles and that's really been true for me because it is a fashion business and my chopping and changing and shifting is sometimes not only keeping myself interested it's it's that time as a creative when the phone doesn't ring as much and you stop winning awards and you become a bit jaded so I always sort of like to sort of take a right hand turn or, or just try to pick up the baton and um, try something new. Um, we'll come on to that. But this one was just looking at fashion photography and also looking at tapestries that I've been in the VNA. So I'm, again, I'm sort of just cross-referencing things. And um, just a bit of a Borden, Edward Borden influence here with a cat. Um, but I, I just quite interested in just using bright colors and all this sort of derives from little thumbnails and the sketchbook ideas I come up with. Um, one thing I've always advocated is just, uh, I've sort of learned is, is just kind of really do what really lights your fire, do what really inspires you. So I'm always adopting subject matter that interests me. And uh, so I'm always sort of looking at the Arctic and I'm interested in the Arctic and Antarctica and global warming and so so I'm always sort of running with themes that that and that I enjoy and this does sort of feed into my uh, commission work at the end of the chain somehow here's just another studio shot I, I realize it's becoming very precious about working on paper it's the same process with sketchbooks it's, it's quite not very nice that or quite intimidating that uh, a brand new white page of a sketchbook or a, a freshly sketched canvas. So to, to take away that, I just started going into secondhand bookshops and buying old books and working directly onto sort of found books and imagery. And that's something I still do. Um, just running in themes. This was just a screen grab I took one day. I just realized that that very early interest in information graphics from my time at BA still feeds through to my work. And I seem to do a lot for medical book, medical illustrations. Um, so there you can sort of see the linkage. Um, information graphics, medical illustration, um, yeah. Just running with another thing. This was a self-initiated brief. I just started looking at the willow pattern story and I, I just basically, it was always sort of very blue and white. So I just wanted to kind of do my own interpretation of the willow pattern story uh, that you find on a ceramic plate. And uh, just by having a sort of a very, looking at um, 
Chinese, Orient, Oriental, Japanese art, and um, just bringing that influence into my work. And again, just some other self-initiated pieces. Um, this was from two years ago. I started working in um, animation. Um, sorry, I don't have any animation at hand. It will be somewhere here on my desktop. But if you look at my uh, Instagram page, there's a lot of animation on there. Um, again, I'm working in series. I'm working in uh, color, working um, all this sort of derives from sketchbooks, from those little thumbnails. Uh, my Instagram page is Russell Cobb underscore art. I think you'll see lots of animations there. I'm a bit worried about this. I started working, doing a lot of imagery on sort of uh, world catastrophe in a way. I was sort of always very influenced in sort of meteors and volcanoes and things like that and sort of. But again, this has a sort of a linear linkage, which I'll come on to talk about. And I... I just to bring it in on the mix, I, I don't know what the what we call this autumn 2018 range. I started. Uh, I realised I was always sort of very influenced in sort of Scandinavian uh, folk art and all sorts of folk art. So I just um, just started looking at, at that as a reference point, and and beyond that, I just went, went to see where the brush took me really, um, and I, I didn't really work to a tight brief. Um, but then this had a, this did sort of lead on to other things. This was the very first thing I did. I've, I've actually started uh, putting illustration onto and painting onto product and uh, created this sort of uh, home brand in a way. So I think being very honest there as, as a creative, you're, it's, it is quite difficult as an illustrator to be sort of trucky, unless you are one of those rarities, you, you know, sort of just working flat out day in, day out. It, it is always a way of constantly looking for alternative revenue streams. And um, luckily, the world today is, uh, has made this possible um, with lots of uh, for print to order sort of websites. Um, and this was just a very quick... Um, uh, order online through photobox.co.uk, uh, 20 pounds to create a pillow. And then I just started getting a little bit playful, started putting my work onto cups and coasters and that sort of thing. Oh, so I am missing one. Um, there was another shot, I missed that out of order, of um, just attending a craft fair so you, you could have seen my stall with my work on some tea towels and oven gloves and bed sheets and so it really took the work into a, a, a new, new place uh self-promotion um back in my time um the association of illustrators i i won the self-promotion gold award four times um so maybe I was sort of doing something right. Um, so much, I've actually just given a lecture on self-promotion to my students, but um, so much is sort of online now, but uh, it's, but um, just contacting magazines or magazines contacting you is a wonderful way to so, sort of self-promote yourself. And again, just show a little bit of, uh, of you behind the scenes and, um, your working process and what you do. This is for the uh, Scandinavian, um, I can't remember what it's called, Technaren um, magazine, the Scandinavian design body. Um, I guess we are going back a bit, but, but uh, a lot of these things are online and digital now, but uh, I was always sort of entering um, competitions and putting your work into trade books, um, just putting the work out there really, uh, trying to sort of make your mark. And um, 
so much is digital now and I still do it. This is a shop from many years ago, but I, I always do like to send postcards out of my work. Um, there's something quite nice and tangible about sort of a, a, a still creating a physical thing. The very first self-promotion card I sent out. Um, I've always been like this. I, I've never sort of um, tried to consciously do work to get work in. The, and what I mean by that is in the subject matter. Um, I always remember someone talking about, oh, I don't do sort of businessmen in suits and arrows and globes. And so I decided in a very sort of passionate way to just whatever I, I put on self-promotion work which was something that was more about me and the sort of things, the subject matter I was really interested in. So sort of there's a bit of military and cycling and drinking coffee and camouflage. There's a lot of really embarrassing spelling mistakes here, uh, advertisement and commission. And so, um, yeah, but this was the very first card I did and sent out to art directors and, and that work. And then I just basically created a collect and keep series so, and this series was very much, um, if you look at the top left, uh, I base that on an action man play figure. So I kind of saw myself as a product and I started looking at, at that time, looking at sort of art deco advertising posters. And again, that play of type and image has permeated all the way through, right from sketchbooks and student times. Um, it's a lot of it's a bit corny now, but sort of genius light bulbs and the, instead of a Rolex, a Coblex watch face. But but they really did sort of uh, really did work and really um, did sort of uh, keep a constant flow of um, work coming in by sending these cards out. And this is very, very dated. This won the gold award for self-promotion, but it was just about the notion of just going to a coffee shop and drinking a coffee. That's all it was. I gave everything a, a name at the time. I created myself as a product called Le Lavage. I don't know why. I think that was something I once saw in Switzerland. Um, again, I always sort of influenced by the, the, for some reason, it's the notion of the Beatles. And, and their album, the Beatles' late, latest album, it would always be a sort of a, the shock of the news, something different, a right-hand turn. So um, I just wanted to do something different. And so I just started drawing with ink, and I wanted to sort of do something bigger and more substantial. So I started create. I covered my whole studio in, um, in drawing and created like a wallpaper. And I guess sort of trying to look towards... Um, uh, more environmental illustration work. And um, just another shot. The two clocks here, I guess it conveys something. It makes me look really successful that I have to be working two time zones, but quite simply, the bottom one was broken. So uh, perception and reality. Um, oh, sorry, I'm missing a slide again. But actually, that, that this was really good because it did win the Creative Review uh, Best in Book in the Illustration Annual. So again, it was just sort of making my mark in a different way, just getting off my backside and just saying, I just want to do something new. And uh, and this did lead to work. This was uh, something I did for an advertising agency uh, for Volkswagen, the Volkswagen Golf, sort of creating um, creating sort of designs in a way. Uh, this was based on a, this was the jungle, a jungle theme. Photography has played a big part. Um, and again, sometimes it's that constantly looking. And this, this was quite a few years ago, just with my son walking uh, in London, just looking at autumn colors. So again, that, that was another trigger point for me. Um, just sort of fell in love with autumn. So this was just uh, some of the work I started to do at the time. Just again, just painting directly onto books in those sort of very vibrant, sort of leafy autumn colours. And this work wasn't for anything; it was just just for me, new, myself initiated. I guess the new autumn range at that year. And um, 
I am with debut art and here's another the end process that all this work does does end up somewhere in sequence um, this was uh, debut arts my one of my old pages on on their website I won't talk about agents for me oh, it's just too much um, let's quickly go on to publish this is what I do I'm just an illustrator let's look at the end product um, I still get really excited about seeing my work in print. I mean, back in the day, I'd rush out and buy the copy of whatever magazine it was in or wherever the work was. It was always, I still get that sort of rush of excitement. Um, so advertising, that's uh, one of the best paid sort of areas. It, it, it's like, uh, like the music business It's because it's all based on license and territories and um the piece can be quite high and this was a series of uh four um 96 sheet posters for the news international the times very simple concept just basically um read our paper and uh move your mind feed your mind sorry was that so your mind is an acorn and it grows into an oak tree um again following your passion um it's quite nice where the work can lead to. I work with a designer here, and this was just for a professional cycling team, um, a cross bike team. Um, so I designed their um, the forest side riding um, team strips. It's actually quite nice wearing your own work when you go out on the bike. Just sort of like that. that was a new sensation for me. So I've designed three of their, their strips now. Stamps, um, that's something that was really nice to do. Again, right back to the beginning. That goes right back to the beginning. Type, image, encyclopedia, medical illustrations. Book covers, again, we can see the connection. I sort of love doing book covers. I've actually just done a couple for Penguin, actually. And, um, so, oh, not here um they have a sort of real long longevity about them and um and it's really nice that it, it, it's uh, like little pieces of art you think about the the, the interplay of type and image and the, the, the wrap around and the, so i've always uh, loved book covers um i don't work very much in editorial simply because it's quite stressful um but again that buzz of seeing your work um the turnaround is very very quick in editorial i mean so it's literally same day next day and uh for me it just uh i think i'm sort of a bit bit more of a slower burn uh person um i never really it's good it's really exciting but i i sort of gravitated towards more design and publishing work now but uh this was the moment I'd always waited for to see my work on the tube and so I secretly photographed it. I didn't want to go up to her and say I did that because she probably thought I was a bit of a loon. But uh, um, I spoke about what you put out there is what you get back in the sense of I always put out um, my self-initiated work rather than I don't advertise published work because it's always a fresh starting point. And this is a good example why, because uh, after this was out, the very next day, I got a phone call from the art director of New Scientist and said, I've got a great idea for the cover. <laughs> and there you go. So it, it's things can be sort of very linear and you, you can get pigeonholed incredibly quickly. Um, I once did a series of uh, gardening illustrations for the Telegraph magazine for six months, and I thought I was going mad. In the end, I was just, that's all I did. I was the Alan Titchmarsh of the illustration world, just painting pots and geraniums. Um, so we have another right-hand turn. Um, photography, this is just a, a photo of my website. Um, I'm sure I'll be questioned on this, and it's it's just the two sides of me, the two things that I that I do. But it's the same game, really. I'm I'm sort of looking for things that interest me, um, looking for subjects to sort of really get my teeth into, and and sometimes it's too much. I 
photographed World War II reenactors, and that actually went on behind the scenes for six, seven years. So there's, I'm really working hard behind the scenes, and um, and there is a sort of linkage there. I, I in post production, I my sort of drawing skills do come into the work. Um, I do see photographs as paintings, um, so hopefully they they sort of give things a little bit of a of me. Um, I've been asked to work on a book for Goodwood Revival, and I, I kind of this photograph stuck with me. This was just uh, someone's daughter, and it just looks exactly like one of my pencil charcoal sketches from my early days. So it, it does sort of permeate in, and this is sort of interest in light and shadow. So the subject of this talk is mark making. I, I'm making my mark in, in other ways too. Again, this was a Viking reenactor. I, I actually, this is the difference now, sort of that lonely occupation of being someone who works on your own. And it's a bit like if you need to share a studio or you need to work alone, you need to sort of understand what sort of person you are. And I'm a bit of both, actually. So when I'm out as a photographer, I, I, I do go into sort of a tunnel um, and get quite intense and I know what I want. But this is a hot summer day and again this could be a just it looks exactly like one of my drawings um this is good word um again it's also sort of finding a niche in the corner for yourself and um i get press parties for goodwood revival and things and there are a thousand photographers there just salivating over cars and engines. And I just decided that I just wanted to look at the people and the drivers. So this is a series of uh, vintage racing drivers that I worked into, worked on, sorry. Here we have, um, again, it, this could be an illustration project or photography. This is the World War II reenactors. Um, the bigger theme behind the work is escapism and transformation. And, and at the time, um, it's, it's about people from all ordinary walks of life transform themselves and time travel into different times. And, and, and these people adopt different personas. And I didn't quite know what I was doing at first, but the subject sort of kind of grew over time and became clear because I, I suddenly thought that there's an actor in everyone, all these people that they could be just sort of from all walks of life. There's suddenly they're, they're acting. It's like amateur dramatics, and and it, there, there's a and so in the broader picture, this this is all about sort of a uh, a great British subculture that's out there. Um, let's show you another. And. How far away can I get from me just sitting alone on the a drawing board, just drawing? Um, I'm working on a series of the Vikings, and I've, a good friend of mine is the Kananga, who's the head of the Vikings in the UK, and I've just got to know these guys over five years. So this gives me access. And this was um, moments uh the battle of hastings 1066 950 anniversary moments before the normans charge and i'm right in there um with the normans in the pouring rain and here we have uh i think it was king harold taking the flag i was so close here i could actually feel the horse's breath on my camera on my hand me just world war ii just in a battle and it's it's all a bit crazy really that you're you're just sort of these reenactors will get together and have mock battles and um yeah i've always been influenced by war correspondence as well so i kind of played that role myself became a war artist and then this is the illustrator side of me and the artist side of me i, I then would get reenactors and create scenes and scenarios and um there's a sort of escapism and playful here, but this is a sort of, at the time, this was a bond cafe uh, in northern France, France, Dieppe, or somewhere like that. And um, this is a German U-boat commander who's, who's on leave.
it was quite contentious. Um, I don't show much of this now because obviously there, there's a sort of depiction of Germans and things like that, but it really was just sort of showing this world. And I, I always thought of myself as a Louis Theroux, just as an investigative journalist going in and spending time with these people. And uh, um, so, yeah, th this was uh, the German side. And again, just became really interested in portraiture. I always wanted to be a portrait painter, but I just don't have the patience. So picking up a camera is a, a lot quicker. But the drawing does serve me well because um, in the same way I approach uh, an illustration brief or an illustration project, I'm, this was a uh, preparatory sketches for a photo shoot. So the illustrator does, and the artist side does sort of kind of merge together. I'm always sort of planning and um, pre thinking ahead of what I'm going to do. And then quite often after a photo shoot, I'll, I'll um, self-critique myself and make notes. And uh, so I'm sort of very much self-taught on the photography side, but it's just sort of trial and error. Let's just have another look at the reenactors. Again, there's a story. This is Colin. He's a window cleaner from London. Um, but we created this battlefield um, scenario. Um, the ultimate selfies. This is me on the far left to get access. Um, this was on the airfield at uh, Goodwood Revival. To get access, I'd actually have to dress up and become part of the display and become quite immersed into it. And this was a bomber command here of a Halifax bomber, I think. And again, this led to a big exhibition in 2016, 150 large scale prints. So quite different, but I don't know. I'd be interested to see what you think. I mean, they, and these sort of obviously lead on to, there was a lot of magazine features on this. But again, on the right here, you can sort of see the drawing and the notation and um, that, that goes behind all this. I'm hoping, I've, I'm hoping I've got uh, some pictures coming up of me actually taking it a step further in a second. But again, ma um, this is Goodwood Magazine, um, a feature about my, my work. And then after a photo shoot, I'm um, just picking up, um, I just, I don't know why it sort of really embeds in me. I just, I'm sort of thinking I'm quite linear sometimes. I, I should have done this, should have done that. So I just start drawing kind of camera angles and positions and portrait studies and looking how other photographers have worked just to sort of kind of really embed it into my brain at what to do next time. And then the drawing sort of does feed back into the portraiture. So, so there's this sort of circular process between the two disciplines. Um, oh yeah, here we are. Um, one year I was actually banned from taking pictures um, because it was spoiling the um, display. It was a, a modern item on, on, a, on a, sort of, sort of like a film set. So I said, okay, I'm just going to be a war artist. Um, so I spent four days just manically drawing. Um, I particularly looked at the work of, uh, war artists of, um, Edward Borden and, uh, Eric Rebilius, so quite influenced. And so there I was sitting on the airfield on the Spitfires and uh, so it, it's, it's, it was a lovely way to merge the two things together. Just had a closer look. It was actually perfect actually because um, one day it was actually pouring with rain and uh, all the pilots were just sort of killing time and dozing under the, under the tents. And um, it was a bit like that sort of waiting for the, the scramble bell. To, to ring in the Battle of Britain. And again, everything evokes a memory. I mean, um, very sadly, this chap on the bottom right, he did pass away the next year very suddenly. So for me, those sort of very personal things and memories and documents. And So coming to the end, um, if Chris was here, he'd recognise this. Um, 
Central St. Martin. So it's where it, where it all sort of began. And I, those are the days you could park your Ford Sierra outside the front in the middle of Longacre, Covent Garden. Um, I find it very sort of difficult how to wrap this up, but um, I think what it all came about was uh, in making my mark, I sort of made it sort of over the years sort of very personal. Um, also constant, always sort of worked on my own personal projects and got into very good habits early on. And so making it personal and, and the sketchbooks, the drawing, the notation is something that serves me well because the past and it does sort of stay with you. Um, and then one day I was just sort of doing a course at Central, at, uh, Central School of Art. And after this had closed down, it's now an H&M store, sadly. Um, and there it was. I could touch it, the typeface of the, uh, the old art school. So the, the past does stay with you and serve you well. So this is me, sort of photographer, taking pictures sketchbook artist illustrator drawing sitting in cafes those things have to, i still do them and uh time to leave the studio time to leave the studio oh my last slide has gone <laughs> finn um that's it thanks very much that was so prolific thank you so much russell i think a round of applause everyone <laughs> I feel like I've just offloaded my soul, if you know what I mean. <laughs> We're pleased to be of service. <laughs> um, should we open it up then to some questions from people? Yeah, I'll um, stop screen sharing. So how do I do that? Stop screen sharing. So you can raise your hand to ask a question or you can pop it in the chat. Can I put, ask one now, Marie, while well, everyone's getting on? Yeah. Russell, um, yeah. this is quite a jeopardy, this one, because you've got two different sides to your work. Um, yes. If you had to drop one tomorrow, which one would it be? <laughs> That's a brilliant question. I'll, I'll give you the really honest yeah. one to that. And I was actually speaking to Johnny Hanna recently, and I, I really put my foot in it because uh, – in a nice way, we're having this chat. And I, I said, well, yeah, photography is a lot more rock and roll, isn't it, than illustration? And as soon as I said that, I realised Johnny is someone who does play in a band <laughs> and, and, and all those things. But what I tried to explain to him, I'd probably be the photography at the moment because I, I, I'm, I just find myself energised so much and I think I spent so long as an illustrator I spent 25 years just sitting at a desk on my own mm -hmm. and I don't know if it's just a natural life transition but when you're suddenly ducking under spitfires or in the middle of a thousand vikings on the field or uh, at a vintage at the start line of a, a, a motor racing thing it just seemed to have kind of lit a flame in me a bit and I, I, I love the energy of that at the moment. But may, I, but that's how I feel today, you know. Yeah. I, I have said, told myself off recently that I, I need to sort of really um, get stuck into some more in these, because we can't take photographs at the moment, so I, I really need to sort of get stuck into artwork again. Mm. Okay, thank you, Russell. It's, I think the other thing is it, it, it's collaboration, isn't it? Um, Mm. I, I love working with people because quite often I'll have uh, an assistant working for me. Um, and if it's a job, you have a team of people there. And there, there, there's a sort of real energy, you know. It's nice to see two sides to, to an illustrator because I think as illustrators, we all think, oh, that's that sole thing we should be doing. But yeah, nice to see that you've got two things going on. And you can really tell that both play off each other. Thanks. That's, that's interesting to hear because... I'm always sort of troubled a little bit because the photography can be quite sort of dark and moody and and then it's it's shot it's low key photography you know I use off camera lighting and it's very moody and then you have the the painting which is very bright and and it's almost sort of uh very sort of um yeah using naive colors sorry primary colors and um 
So that it really is two sides. Yeah. Well, that's what I'd say. Just lastly, like you've got a real good balance because your photography is very, very muted. I'd say like see through black and white, and yeah. Other, but then your illustrations are really vivid. So yeah. I think it's a perfect balance myself. <laughs> I do generally do feel it's very hard sometimes because you to, to kind of step from one to the other in a day is very difficult. It's like I have to sort of. Mm. If I'm doing photography, I'm doing it for a week, you know, in, in, in that world. And there's a lot on my Instagram, by the way. It's just Russell Cobb, um, if anyone wants to look there. So um, we've got a question from Kalisha, Russell, and yep. she's, um, what do you think makes you unique as an artist? And then she goes on to ask, what advice would you give aspiring creators, artists now as they move into the industry? Right, I, I wrote, I've got a little book here and I've wrote and <laughs> wrote them. that's terrible, written three things. Um, number one, um, I think it's just always trying to sort of have a personal vision and a personal input in, into the into the work because it, it comes from the diaries and the notation and it's it's there's always sort of a personal influence and a personal um passion of mine that, that feeds into the work making it personal um it um i think stick at it is the other big thing i always used to say because i remember at st martin's i just remember being completely overwhelmed there were some such talented people there better draftsmanship better drawers than me everything you name it but i over time, what taught me was it was the people that just stuck at it day in, day out. And that. Um, and what I also always advise people is, uh, you know, I'm always setting myself projects and setting myself goals and just lots of little steps at the time, not to make these, expect these big steps. So just stick at it. Um, that was the other thing. Um, and then we were on to another big discussion. Um, just follow your own voice because it's that compare and despair, isn't it? I mean, with social media now and so much, I can get pretty depressed where if I open up Instagram and look at the feed and think, oh my goodness, it's a, uh, you know, I've washed the car today. <laughs> and um, yeah, there's a sort of, you, you know, that that's a big debate, isn't it? You know, compare and despair. So there's three things there, personal vision, stick at it and don't compare too much. Um, Alice has got her hand up to ask a question. Alice, hi Russell, thank you so much. That was really hi. inspirational. Thank you. Um, right, if you could collaborate with any artist, alive or dead, who would it be? Good question. Um, that's a that's a really yeah. Oh my goodness. Um, There's people I, I like some of the, I I think some I, I really got into sort of Grayson Perry mm -hmm. well, because I just love the way he's such an extrovert and his work like with my merchandising and stuff and and brand home brand his work sort of ended up on product and he's made buildings and I sort of really admire him because he's sort of like an, a, an immersive artist. Mm. Um, if someone old, I would love to have sat down with Edward Borden or um, mm. someone like that. Uh, photography. Ooh, I'd love to be in a fashion studio. Yeah, or something. Fashion photography or someone like that. One of the big fashion photographers. Uh, yeah, on that one. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you. All right. That's <laughs> a good question, Alice. It was, yeah. Um, thank you. We've got another hand up from Zlata. You've got a question for us, Tal. Hello. Uh, thank you for amazing um, showcase of your work. Thank you. And um, I had kind of similar question to the previous one. I had which artists inspire you? And, and then I have another two questions, if it's okay to ask. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little bit funny about admitting things. I think I'm a little bit of a magpie. I take, I just like looking at sort of little things, you know, take a little bit of this, a little bit of that. But if my early bookshelf would have been John Piper, 
the neo-romantic British artist, uh, Peter Blake, a um, little bit of Hockney. So there's some of the heavyweights there I, I would sort of look at. Mm -hmm. And then I have, uh, how do you overcome art block? Uh, or did you experience art block? Art block? Mm -hmm. You mean in the sense of writer's block? Kind of, yeah. It's uh, like when you kind of want to make something, but you're not inspired or don't know when to, where to start. or That, okay. that kind of thing, like an art block where you want to create, but can't pretty much <laughs> um i hope i covered that in the talk and in, in some points but i think very much a direct answer would be <laughs> sketching you know i'm just drawing things that influence me and um i think the other trick i do is as i talk is cross-referencing as as well um I, i'm often looking at two things it could be i'm always sort of looking at sort of uh I work in series, don't I? So sometimes I'll just open a book on tapestry and I think, well, how can I combine tapestry with with uh, maybe um, photography? Or um, I'm always trying to sort of... But it's that very immersive thing. It, it is just picking up the sketchbook and starting from a, from a starting point. And I, I understand your question. So, um, and that's what I try to convey is that sometimes I'll just draw what's on the table or out the view, out the, the view out of the window and just hope that it's a bit like cleaning. One, you, you put it off and you put it off, but once you sit down and you immerse yourself, the, the suddenly just things start to happen. Okay, that's a brilliant advice, I think. Um, and then I have last question. And right, that's... I want to come in on that. Mm? Because I will really admit the biggest fear I always had was getting that first commission and the clock is ticking and the art director said, right, can you send me roughs tomorrow? And you go, yeah, yeah, okay. And then just basically not just having absolute writer's block. So I kind of taught myself just to be this sort of pouring everything out onto paper and then I would just put that page down and look and reread it, and something there'll always be something there that that triggers something. Yeah. Thank Sorry, you. you have a question. There was something. Yeah, one one last question. <laughs> Do you think that it is possible uh, for someone who, for example, studies graphic design, uh, that can get into the illustration field and be successful? Um. I think so, yeah, because I, th I think um, the one, the biggest thing that's changed, it, it was, uh, I remember my time at St. Martin's, you were, a, you were an illustrator or you were a designer, and St. Martin's always encouraged the kind of the, um, that was one thing that was drilled into us, drummed into us, was the, at that time, was, was to sort of cross work across disciplines. And so the illustration department was in the all admission was very much a sort of fine art illustration course. And um, but then it had the graphics edge. But but I think it's become much more over the years that where it, where it was quite a contentious thing at the time. I think it's just quite normal now that. Uh, just to say, I was also chairman of the Association of Illustrators for nearly five years. And for what I from what I saw, there was a lot of the cross fertilization into other disciplines, you know, um, became more common practice. Because sometimes you look at work and some illustration work does look very design and vice versa. Um, design can be quite illustrative. So yeah, I'd say yes. Thank you very much for all of your answers. That's okay. Okay, we've got another question from Lucy who's got her hand up as well. Hello. Hello. Um, so I was just wondering, when you first graduated and started trying to get jobs, yeah. how did you kind of get your professional momentum going? And how did you find adjusting from responding to briefs for uni and responding to briefs for a client? It's thinking back a long way now. Um, <laughs> 
first of all, I, I, I just didn't leave St. Martin's and walked out the door and was straight into working commission work. If I was really honest, I, I, I had all sorts of jobs. I was working in a warehouse and working in the, on a building site, all sorts of things. But I always allocated some time to what I wanted to do. I never took my eye off the ball. Um, thinking back to that time, one thing we did do, we really missed, I really missed, and a lot of us did, that sort of university environment of having sort of people around you. And uh, so we, within the year, we formed a collective, illustration collective called Monster. So that really served us fantastic, uh, wonderfully well. It was called Monster. Um, so there were, I think there were eight of us to begin with. So we decided that we would get together once a month and have group exhibitions. We'd have a group portfolio. Um, and so we, we kind of kept that university ethos going. Uh, so that's how, that's my first memory of it. And, and then from that, we had a group portfolio and then we'd all take turns in, in those days of, taking the portfolio around London and dropping it off at agencies. So we did have that support network there. And I think it just became, it was a real bloody struggle at the beginning, you know, that that's sort of, oh my God, the fear. And, but very slowly, it just, you just very quickly, it's the same process, you know, you just produce some roughs and uh, work to a deadline. You kind of raise your, your game. It just, it's, it's, it's all right, you know. Um, but but that that setting up that illustration collective was, was the best move that we we did really. Um, I'd understand what you're like. Um, sometimes having a, you know, some people just would then rent a desk in a group studio. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's lot, lots of things you can do. So just think about how you are as a person. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, we got a question from Siobhan as well. She wants to know if you've always made art or was there a moment, experience or person that's sort of inspired you to start? Yeah, I, 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 it's quite a straight bat on that. I, I, from my youngest memory, it was just in me, I was always drawing and then, then I was sort of Russell, the kid that was good at art in, at school. And so that that's, and I never had that sort of careers chat, you know, do you want to be a fireman or a, a, I just knew straight away. Yeah. Um, and Beth has, has said that um, you, your sketches, your sketchbooks, your painting and your photographs, that they're, they're all sort of different. But is there anything that you see that comes through in all of your work? I think it's... Um, it is very different, yeah. And as I was, sometimes there uh, are flashes of it with the uh, the very sort of with black and white photography. It, it um, I like I light stuff with remote lighting. So from the start, I I'm kind of setting it up as a painting. You know, it's almost like light coming through a window, and um, there's a connection there. So I think the black and white work is particularly like my drawing work, but I think we spoke a little bit, didn't we, about the, the difference. And I, I do struggle still. Um, but then again, I thought about it photography. I, I, I thought I'd love to go to India or Cuba or somewhere and just maybe it would merge even more looking mm. at sort of bright primary colors and, and textures. Mm -hmm. So I guess I just not had the opportunity to do that. Um, and Ashwari has asked um, a, a question about, uh, she's made a statement, I've always seen the artists sometimes um, don't like to reveal just how hard they try to work, they try to get noticed or to get work as if being ambitious about getting one's artwork seen and sold is somehow shameful. Mm. I, I always sort of have a wry joke that I'm sort of selfish, selfish, um, self pub you know, self-publicist, you know, and I, I think you have to be. I think it's all intrinsic to, I never enjoy being a network. There's a networking side I, I, I've never done. I've never in, in, enjoyed that too much. So to, you know, there, there were some famous people who used to turn up every private view. 
we used to stay in there and go as uh, <clears throat> I won't mention. I'll just say Robert. They used to say, "Is Robert here yet?" And um, <laughs> I've never been one of those. But I, but I think there are other ways. Of, I think just constantly pumping out that that self promotion. And um, I've learned that um, sometimes you don't even have to say too much if it's just a sort of environmental shot of your studio. Uh, people kind of join the dots. It, it, it's perception and reality, you know. Um, so sometimes you, you don't have to say too much. You can be very subtle in the way you do it. And I'd just like to ask a question as well. Um, yeah. You're, um, I think the second speaker this week has talked about being a sponge. You spoke very early on about being a human sponge. Yes. Do you, do you think that's key to your practice? absorbing all of that visual information and your passions and I think it is yeah and I think there's that that notion of never never switching off um but that's a really joyful thing and a nice thing because it's uh uh I think um what's the dragon's den once if anyone knows that and I think there was an artist on there who said well we can't really you know this is a you've, you've got a lifestyle occupation and I, I think that's what it is it becomes a lifestyle and the grace and perry thing he, he kind of adopts the, the persona and he, he becomes his art doesn't he johnny's very much like that he's johnny hannah he's created this alternative persona and this dark town world so um so it's all very subtle you know i think it's i'm yeah i'm always it's 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 me it's who i am so so I don't think we've got any more questions now. I think I can't see any more in the chat. So I think that's everyone. So if we can say, oh, hang on. I think somebody's just flagged up a question. We'll catch it while we can. Ray, it's a question from Ray. Have you ever had to change or reinvent your style? Um, again, maybe the talk touched on that. I'll be really honest, as I, I did say, I remember saying it, um, we are in a fashion business and trends come and go. Um, and there is, there really is that, I've gone through cycles of turning work down, turning work down because I couldn't physically produce the work um, from, because I work traditionally based, um, you know, I used to use this joking analogy that I, I'd be the sort of, monastic existence hours and hours painting manuscripts i couldn't do the work quick enough and then when the, the the digital the onset of digital art came along it completely changed the landscape and um and i just couldn't compete in some ways and uh that's why i got out of editorial because they can just say i've had it this week with penguin can you change the background from green to blue and i said well no it's painted you know it's hand painted so I've had to, so the black and white drawing, the, the sketching, the, it, it's my way of kind of addressing being broader, to, um, having more strings to my bow. And, and it's representative of me having to change because let, let's face it, the, work, the phone stopped call, ringing. And um, some people are very lucky. It, it's just constant. But um, I think you have to keep yourself inspired too um yeah so so i have yeah so i've got the merchandising i teach the photography there's the black and white drawing the sketchbooks I've had, i could probably there's seven things straight mm. away yeah mm. that's great thank you so much thank you for your time this afternoon russell and that's thanks for right. time showing you your fabulous work if we can say a very big thank you to russell everyone Thank you. Um, I'm so sorry I couldn't see you in person, but another time, hopefully. Another time, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, I hope you have a good rest of the day. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to turn the recording off now.